This video will increase a few of the concepts related to the mole. The mole, of course, is the unit for chemical quantities within the SI system. As this is an SI unit, we can use all of our prefixes with this, so we can have everything from gigamoles all the way down to nanomoles as far as the prefixes we've discussed in class. All of the SI prefixes also apply here, so you could of course have picomoles, femtomoles, etc. on the small end, petamoles, te tetramoles, etc. on the larger end. One of the central concepts for the mole is a number that you've already seen, which is that one mole equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd things. And these things are usually small. So these things could be atoms, ions, electrons, protons, neutrons, etc. We also use this to refer to molecules. So here's the central idea behind the mole. One of the other ideas behind the mole is that we can take one mole of anything and we can weigh it out by using mass. One mole of anything will equal the molar mass of that substance. We'll see in class on Wednesday, or you will have seen in class on Wednesday, that the molar mass is calculated the same way as the atomic mass of a molecule. Likewise, the molar mass of an element has the same value as the average atomic mass of that element. So one mole of calcium, by looking at the periodic table, would have a molar mass of 40.08 grams instead of atomic mass units. We'll see again in class on Wednesday that one atom of calcium has an average atomic weight, weight of ato average atomic mass of 40.08 amu. If the molar mass is calculated the same way for a molecule as it is for the atomic mass, then for if the if mass of a mole is calculated the same way as the mass of a molecule, then let's take a look at, say, calcium nitrate. So calcium nitrate, if we wanted to know the molar mass of this compound, of this formula, we would first start by listing the element. or the elements in the compound. And so we have calcium, nitrogen, and oxygen. In our next column, we would list the number of each element in that compound. There's only one calcium here, but how many nitrogens are here? We have two of the nitrate ions. Each nitrate ion has one nitrogen, so there are a total of two nitrogens in this compound. Likewise, there are three oxygens in each nitrate ion, and there are two nitrate ions, so there are two times three, six oxygens in calcium nitrate. The next thing we would list would be the average atomic mass of each element. So these would come from your periodic table and you'll have a periodic table on all exams.
Now the number of each element is a counted number. So it has unlimited significant figures. Or another way of thinking about it is it is exact. When you multiply by exact numbers, multiplication is the same as adding up that exact number of times. So multiplying these across, the number of each element and the average atomic mass, we're going to keep to the same place here rather than worrying about how many significant figures we have. So we're going to think about this as though we're adding up 16 six times. So 16 plus 16 plus 16, etc. Here, it wouldn't change our number of significant figures. We would have four significant figures in the 16.00, and we still have four significant figures in the 96.00. But what if we had 10 oxygens? If we had 10 oxygens, exactly 10 oxygens, then if we were keeping significant figures, we would end up losing precision if we could only keep four significant figures here. But because we're multiplying by an exact number, we're going to consider this to be the same again as adding up 16.00 10 times. And if we add it 10 times, that means we should actually be keeping to the hundredths place. So for molar masses, when we do this, we're gonna keep precision throughout rather than worrying about the number of significant figures. When we get to the end here and we add everything up, we will be limited by the precision we have in our total mass of each element. And so if we were adding in something like say lead with a mass of 207.2, then 207.2 would only be precise to the tenths place and our final answer would have to be rounded to the tenths place after adding everything together. So again, this final column here is the total mass of each element in the compound. So when we add these up, we get 0 0.10 in the end, and 4, 10, 14, 164, 0 0.10 grams per mole is the molar mass of calcium nitrate. Now we call the mole the central concept in chemistry because everything that we're going to do in terms of calculations from now on just about is going to be making use of moles. And to convert anything, we have to be able to go through moles. So if we wanted to convert number of particles to moles, we would simply divide by one mole, or rather multiply by one mole over 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So we would divide by Avogadro's number of particles. If we had a mole, or some number of moles, and we wanted to know how many particles we had. So I'm going to get rid of this one here and call it moles, A moles, whatever the A is. If we had some number of moles of A and we wanted to know how many molecules we had, then we would multiply by the inverse here. We would multiply by Avogadro's number over one mole. Substituting in an appropriate label for whatever those particles were. Again, ions, atoms, molecules, etc. Now we've also added on with this concept of molar mass that if we have the mass of A, if we're given grams of A, we can convert grams of A to moles by multiplying by one mole over the molar mass. Likewise, if we have moles, we can get to the mass by multiplying by the molar mass over one mole. 
So let's say that we take a look at our calcium nitrate again. If we go up here and look at calcium nitrate, we've calculated the molar mass as 164.10 grams per mole. So what if I wanted to know how many moles were in 10 grams? So if I have 10.00 grams of calcium nitrate, can take a look at this little diagram here. And to go from grams of calcium nitrate to moles of calcium nitrate, I'm going to divide by the molar mass. I'm going to multiply by one mole of calcium nitrate over the molar mass of calcium nitrate which was 164.10 grams. My grams of calcium nitrate will cancel out. So my answer here will be moles of calcium nitrate. which is 0 0.06093845, etc. Now the question comes about significant figures. We have four significant figures in our mass of calcium nitrate. We have five significant figures in our molar mass of calcium nitrate. So four significant figures is appropriate. Remember, when there's a decimal, we start counting in the beginning at the first non-zero digit, which is the six, and we count everything after that. So the fourth significant figure is where that three is, which would be rounded. So we have 0 0.06094 moles of calcium nitrate. Do we have to stop here? No, we could continue. If we go back to our figure here, what if I wanted to know how many molecules of calcium nitrate there were in 10 grams? If I'm given the mass of calcium nitrate, the only way to go from that mass to the number of particles is by passing through moles. And so, I would start out the same way, or in fact, I can use the same work I have so far, but instead of merely stopping here, I would continue on. After converting from grams to moles, my next conversion would be from moles to particles, and I would multiply by Avogadro's number of molecules per one mole of calcium nitrate. Or in this case, because of the kind of compound it is, I would call it formula units. So the answer here would take all of that work from the line before. You could type it all in again too but with no rounding in the middle. And we would instead now have, keeping four significant figures, 3.670 times 10 to the 22nd units of calcium nitrate. These would be formula units because this is an ionic compound.